Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me, as usual, is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Doing good. Working on getting better. What Excellent. do you think of that? <laughs> Constant improvement. That is awesome. Yes, sir. Can I? C-A-N-I. Tony Robbins. <laughs> So we want to talk today about something we haven't talked about, if ever, uh, but certainly not in a long time, and that is basic survival. Because uh, where I live in Vancouver, although I'm down in South America right now, uh, we've been waiting for this big earthquake to come. And the San Andreas Fault is supposed to be, you know, about to smash the whole west coast of the United States. And we often hear about floods and, and well, war and famine and earthquakes and landslides and and how do you prepare yourself so that's one of the things that we want to touch on because oftentimes we're not spending enough time thinking about you know what happens if tomorrow we have no power we have no water we have no food except what's in our refrigerator in fact uh, I just recently read some research that says that these days in the modern economy everything is just in time so food as it's coming to the grocery store is really in the truck. And there are only about three days of supply on the shelves of the store and maybe one extra day in the back, and that's it. And if the trucks stop coming, within three days, the shelves are bare. What do you know about that? <laughs> well, my background in the grocery business would be don't worry about it. We've got this big distribution center. We've got hundreds of thousands of trucks. We're moving produce and food and meat all the time. I ah, worry about it. Yeah, except there's no road, baby. <laughs> no. What if the road is impassable for, oh, I don't know, a month? That's Yeah, it's hard to imagine. Now, I did manage a store up in Prince Rupert, and there was a landslide, and it closed the only road highway out of Prince Rupert to civilization. And I had never experienced that before and I panicked and I was finding out where I could find a barge so that we could barge up the food along the coast. And everybody kind of said, Scott, tomorrow it'll, it's not like a massive landslide, it's just a little landslide, they'll clear it off and, and we'll be fine. So, uh, but if the entire infrastructure is devastated, uh, then it's a real problem for people. We're not used to being self-sufficient. We're not used to growing our own food. And we're certainly not used to getting water out of a stream. Right. <clears throat> so what happens if, for instance, the payment processing center crashes and uh, is uh, unable to process orders or c cash transactions for, I don't know, a week? Cash only, right? Cash only. What if there's no power in the store? Well, some stores have a generator, so the generator would last until the uh, source of energy for the generator, which is probably the gas, diesel. the diesel, yeah. is gone. All right. What, what do you think that is? One day? Two days? Yeah, probably two days. And they don't do that anymore. This was 20 years ago. I don't think they put them in new, in new stores at all. So no power backup? Well, you just, any time an area, ha you can tell when you have a power outage, right? So there was a power outage in Coquitlam six months ago, and I happened to go not to, to the store that I worked for originally, but a different store, and they were closed down. So they just shut the doors. They shut the doors. So that tells you right there that no power, no business. Right. Now, if, of course, if we know this is lasting, they'll probably open the doors and uh, maybe we'll um, do cash only, or maybe people will just simply open the doors and clear the shelves. Absolutely, you know, the staff isn't about to stop you. No, I mean, why would they risk their lives for a bucket of lard or a case of Coca-Cola? That's right. So, so if it gets to that, people will clear the stores pretty quick. Well, and you see that all the time. Whenever there's a uh, hurricane coming, you know, or in Florida or something like that, you look at the, they do the, the news thing, they show the shelves, they're empty because everybody has gone and stocked up. Right. And if the and hurricane... The trucks didn't get 
yeah, the tracks didn't get there and they didn't want to get there because it was the wrong place to be. So the distribution center says, no, let's not go there. Let them just ride it out. Yep. Batten down the hatches. We'll wait till it's over. And, and uh, once the roads are clear, we'll send the trucks out again and fill it up. Right. Just imagine if the power went out in the coolers at the distribution center. Now what? Mm -hmm. Everything that was there goes bad. I mean, the vegetables will last a while, but all the meat is gone, right? Yep. Frozen foods are all gone. Yeah, frozen food goes. Yeah. So anyway, that's if the natural disaster hits. But there are many opportunities for disruption of, of the economic kind. Like, it could be that uh, some software disruption is foisted upon us, or uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there, there are many reasons why a distribution network can fail. Yes, although, you know, to, to be the devil's advocate on that, it hasn't happened in the last uh, 30, 40 years in North America, so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Right. Yeah, I, I don't want to paint things on the blackboard here, but we are we are heading into some interesting times. We will have a power shift in January in the United States that is different from all of the power shifts that we've had before. That's true. And there's lots of preppers and survivalists that are out there talking about, you know, being self-sufficient and having caches of food because because here's the other thing too if if society breaks down and there is no food the people that have food are going to be in a lot of danger because that's now the most valuable commodity there is right who cares about gold and and paper with with dollar bills written on it when you can't eat and if somebody knows that you've got some food uh, they're going to be coming by to say hello yeah right so uh, i guess the rules would be Stash it. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, keep it to yourself. And look and look like you're hungry like everybody else, right? Yeah, oh yeah, De definitely don't don't flaunt it. And uh, and I don't know if you tell your cousin because sometimes you tell your cousin and he tells somebody else and maybe the wrong person. Yeah. Just as an example, a friend of mine in Prague had closed down his business with silver, had $200,000 worth of inventory in transit, meaning he had it in his house while they were switching from store A location to, to location B. Somebody found out, told somebody else, and that somebody else came in and cleaned out the entire place. Wow. No insurance coverage because this was not on his rider. It was just a temporary situation, right? Right. And he said he knew who told. Yeah. Yeah, you can't. There's many times the, the most important thing is to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Well, anyway, so let's try and offer some solutions. I mean, I wouldn't be babbling about this for no reason at all. We do have a commercial interest. I mean, we do want to help people. But our business is the business of helping people with food. Right. And what I want to talk about is the stuff that lasts a long time, stuff that offers an excellent nutritional value, is dense, is easy to store, will survive power shutoff and for years, and is easy to mix. All you need is some water and you have a meal. Oh, nice. And you can get water out of the f out of the toilet tank if you need to. I don't mean the bottom side before you flush it. Right. Well, you know, you bring up a really good point because if you're talking about <clears throat> like long term, one of my concerns always was uh, if you get cans of you know if you get like flour will last forever because it's basically dead. But if you get like cans of beans or cans of corn or can, any of these cans, they only last like a year or two. So you could have it three and if there's any puncture, you've got problems with botulism and bacteria. So it's kind of like you get all this food, you put it in a corner for an emergency and then after a certain period of time you have to remove it, eat it, 
which I'm not too happy about, and then <laughs> replace it. So it's not like you can just stick something for five years in the corner and forget about it. Right. So how about if you had a uh, healthy food that you could eat because it's good for you? It's not just parked there for just in case. It is actually good, high nutritional value concentrated food, and you rotate it, but you have a buffer on hand. Right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, indeed. So, let's talk uh, about them. Let's talk about them. Like, yeah. what are some of these products? Well, the number one nutritional energy that lasts the longest we have is the um, is the barley gold. It's the uh, extract. Well, it starts with barley grain that has been grown on special fields that have been specially nourished in balanced soils that have been selected, sprouted, milled, and concentrated that have been proven to last for five years with full enzymatic activity. So no degradation of the product or the nutritional value. Perfect. And it's high protein, but it's also high energy. So it's really good stuff. Plus it's soothing to the gut. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, because everyone will be oops. under a lot of stress. Yeah, you, yes, you might be under stress. And it comes in uh, one pound plastic jars. We also have it in our warehouse in 15 pound sacks. Wow. So, so I'm not sure if people want it like that. I would think that the one pound jars are probably good. And I would run with that. I have it in two versions, the number one, number two. The number one is uh, less protein, less concentrated. So the number two is for people who are either diabetic or need a high protein diet. So people like yourself, for instance, who should have some protein every day, you would probably do better on number two. Right. I do do better on number two. I like it more than number one. Yeah. So that. I would. <clears throat> so let's, let's make a special. We have uh, free shipping on three jars, and we have 10% extra on six jars. 10% so off. Off, yes. Okay. So, all right. So let's talk a little bit about the barley gold. It, how much would I eat in, in a day normally? And then if it was sort of like a meal replacement because there was nothing else to eat, would I go through one of these uh, plastic jugs in a day or a week or what sort of, how would I kind of plan for like a, th uh, let's say for a month, I want to make sure I could be okay for a month. And All I right, have so two other people in my family. So the one jug is uh, normally if you're using it as a supplement, I use a, an ounce. A tape, oh, no, I use a tablespoon. So half an ounce a day. Lasts for a long time. Well, it's 16 ounces in a jar, so... Uh, There's your month. One month. Yeah, when I use one tablespoon a day, and it's plenty, that's um, going to last me a month. If this is the only food I have, I'd probably be eating three. So it would probably last me three, ten days. Ten days, okay. So three, uh, three, jar three jars per person per, per month. month. Okay. So now you need to decide for how long you want to be safe. Mm -hmm. if, if you need the standard 72 hours that are recommended, all you really need is just three jars always on hand. Like if you've just opened jar number four, it's time to order another three pack. Right. Or if you, if you want to go big, then uh, when you're down to two jars, buy six more. Cool. All right. So you'd also mentioned a flax product. Right. Flax lignans. You need some essential fatty acids to go with this because those are really important. And you need fiber. So uh, this flax lignin, similar characteristics, milled in a similar way, again, at least four years of non-spoiled shelf life, which is really important. Um, so one jar, I just take a, a teaspoon a day. And that's not going to change. It, no, it's called flax lignin, 
and uh, it's you, you know, essential fatty acids are such important thing in the body. They uh, every cell in your body has the uh, membrane that separates it, the inside of the cell from the everything else is a bilipid layer. Essential fatty acids is the shell that contains your cell, every cell in your body, all 10 trillion of them. Right. And typically we don't get enough of it. Typically, no. Typically when we're aging, we have somehow managed to either eat uh, peroxidated fats, it's, which is like fried food or spoiled fats, or just deficiencies. Right. Okay, so that's it. We need a couple of those on hand. Yep, keep two of those on hand. And now what you really need is now some pigments, colorful stuff. Uh, normally you get them from vegetable and fruit. You know, you want to have the blue stuff, the red stuff, the yellow stuff, the orange, and uh, all the colors of the rainbow. The more colorful it is, the more protected you are from decline. That's why the fr fruits and vegetables are so healthy. Right. So we need to find some way to get this when there's no grocery store. This is where the Exula superfoods come in play. They, uh, they are this sort of stuff. They are made from dehydrated, finely milled, rare and high efficiency, natural, plant grown ingredients. When you when you dry this stuff down to below 5% moisture, that, that stuff will last a very long time. It just sits dormant until you open it and add moisture and heat. So you mix it with liquid and you put it inside your body. That's when the enzymes spring back to life, activate, and do what they're supposed to do, act like nourishment. So it's like having a salad, but you just put the moisture back in, drink it, and it, all the good stuff comes with it. That's right. Okay, so let's talk about some of the Exula products. So we have the baseline foundational called Zoetine, which is a protein-rich breakfast or morning type of food that you would use to nourish and sustain. If you want the best, the best, the best there is, the other foundational we make is called Iridesa. Mm -hmm. That's, that's uh, about as good as it gets when it comes to foods. It's one of and, my favorites. Uh, yeah. You're probably missing it right now, huh? I, I brought Stratoflora with me. I thought okay. I'm going to focus on my gut flora and, and uh, the Stratoflora, and it's been great. Yeah, absolutely. So the Stratoflora you're mentioning, that's the... Um, it's the liquid plumber of the digestive system. If you, if you get a problem, and of course, when you're eating stuff that's not exactly right, like you, your travels in South America, right? Like you could get yourself into eating a salad that was uh, put together by unwashed hands, and you're going to encounter very new microbials. Yes. We know it as the Montezuma's Revenge. That's right. Hasn't so happened when, so far. I'm happy to say. Oh, no, of course not. But as, as but it can or may yes. or it's certainly inevitable. possible. Yeah, let's not say inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you will get never, never to Scott. <laughs> anyway, if it should happen, Stratoflora is great because you put that back in the system, and uh, what what's in there is 70 different strains of microbes. Some of them very aggressive and others very supportive. So what happens is that the bad guys end up in a street fight with the good guys, and uh, inside of maybe overnight, you'll be back instead of two weeks of horrendous, right, inflamed gut that just keeps dumping, swelling, whatever, trouble. Yeah, I can attest to that. Anytime I've had any sort of you know, digestive issues, it, they've been very, very short. And of course, I'm taking the Stratoflora on an ongoing basis, and I'm just working to build up my digestive system to get as, as strong as possible, which is why I brought it on this trip. Yes. Yeah, very good. That, that's an excellent point you're making, because 
the other feature of the uh, problem of the gringo traveling into strange places is that his digestive system or his immune system is not trained for all the exotic bugs that he's going to encounter. Yeah. So there you go. So we have Iridesa, we've had uh, Zoetine, we've had Stratiflora. So the, the Iridesa is kind of the overall really good for everything. The Zoetine is good for protein uh, and the Stratiflora is good for your digestive system. Any others that you would recommend? The afternoon, if you want to have some afternoon pick-me-up for energy, that's one of the green ones that we have. We, we make Oracil, which is uh, connective tissue and aging, like putting your structure back together. Mm. We have Advancium, which is for uh, people who really want to be top of their game. It's the uh, uh, knowledge workers superfood. It ah. really feeds really feeds the mental function and all of that. Uh, when Javari was designing it, he said, I want to turn up all the talents in the body. Mm. So that's the Advancium. The, uh, if you have con concerns with uh, cancer or issues of that sort, the premium has been formulated to help uh, with cellular turnover. turnover. Mm. Okay. And then we have one other one called Excella 50 which is the baseline item. That is the one that uh, is given either to children or to weak people or to pets or whatever. I, I, that's probably not the one that you need to store unless you're thinking of your very fragile grandmother. Okay. What, and now there are some like Elijah Plex. Yeah, Elijah Plex, we designed that for a cellular renewal. So that would be, if you have cancer, you definitely want that in your cupboard. Right. But it's probably not an emergency food supply. Cool. So how long would the Exla line last if we were to get them? So on the mm -hmm. shelf, uh, three years at uh, dry, cool room storage, 15 years in a freezer. Wow. If you open it, if, if it's at fridge temperature, one month. If it's at room temperature, it goes fairly quick, maybe a week to 10 days. Because it's just like any other food. You know, once you get moist, moist air on it, it's going to go live. It's right. going to start digesting itself. Right. That's the, that's the whole point of real food. Real food gets... It's real. <laughs> it's real. It doesn't sit like flour for years and years and years with nothing happening. Uh, now, what if you keep it in the freezer? Oh, it will last for indefinite. Right. As long as you can keep the enzymes out of their active zone, they'll go for go on forever. Yeah. So normally, what I do is I keep it in the freezer. I pull it out, open it up, take a couple scoops, put it in my drink, close it, put it back, and then I well, I have a magic bullet, and I magic bullet it with some blueberries because I happen to have some fresh picked. Well, they're frozen, but they were fresh picked blueberries from the summer, and that becomes a very nice, uh, very nice drink for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's lovely. If if the power gets unplugged, you're gonna have a whole lot of blueberry all at once. Well, I'll do it without the without the blueberries. <laughs> and <laughs> but, oh, let me let me bring up this point. This is really important because I have tried in my life many, many. I was gonna say thousands. It's not thousands, but of protein shakes and different types of shake mixes and you know and some of them you just put them in a shaker you shake it a little bit and it's and it's all not clumped up it's fine i mean there's the odd one most of them are horrendous when it comes to mixing but i can take a fork put two spoons of any of the axilla products in this in water stir it like this fast with my fork and there might be the odd little sort of bubble that i just have to pop but it all just goes right into the water. I mean, it is really amazing when you see something that, that does actually just become a drink as opposed to something you almost have to force to become a drink. Right. Yeah, great care has gone into manufacturing these. They are micronized to a much smaller particle size than you would expect, and it's very uniform. The, the typical uh, stuff that you buy in stores, if you, if you take it with your fingers and you rub it, you will have grit 
with the actual products, they will be all very silky smooth because all of the particles have been taken down to a very small size. And that's important because we extract only from the surface layer. You know, like when you when your digestive system uh, goes into digesting something, it doesn't get to digest something that's on the inside here. It only digests the surface. And so that... Uh, means that you're going to uh, that the smaller the particle, oh, yes. there's there's so probably. let's say this is your particle, right? So we're only going to get what's on the outside of the particle. So the smaller the particle is, I have to do it this way. Then the more particles there are, then the more you're going to absorb. But if your particle is like this big, then you're not going to be absorbing very much of it, and that's a really a key part to the food, right? Because if you're in a dangerous situation, like that there's, you know, there's been an earthquake, that you're not going to get any power for a week or a month, or uh, and everything is sort of broken down, you want to be able to make sure that you're getting a lot of energy so that you can protect your family. Yeah. And uh, the surface area increases with the third power of the diameter, right? So it really makes a big difference. A teaspoon of good powder is equal to a tablespoon of not so good powder. Yeah. So the good quality Exola products, even though they're not cheap, are actually an excellent value because you get out of them more, three times as much as the comparables. Right. And that, that uh, absorption issue is a huge, huge deal. Issue. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, anything else you want to add to uh, to what we've talked about? I guess the one last thing in your uh, difficult time will be water. I would recommend that you have some of our prills and pearls on hand because you'll be treating water somehow. We, we also uh, have a you also have a gravity fed water filter, which which would work really well. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. Then you need to have that ready. We have promoted not long ago a, uh, a camp fire distiller, emergency distiller. Oh. I don't know if, if people have noticed it. Um, if any one of them, if one, any one of the listeners here wants to hear about it, just contact me. I'll tell you how. But anyway, the point is this. It's a pressure cooker that goes on top of any fire. Like you can just set up two bricks and some broken two by fours that you make fire out of. And this is a distiller that self distills and drops down water that's going to be completely clean, drinkable, wow. free of thing. Like you could fill it you, you, with ditch water. You can pee in it. It will get you drinking water. Wow. All right. Well, I'll get the link to that. I'll make sure I put it in the description below for everybody. That's a good thing to have. Great. So thank you, everybody. And now you know uh, some things that you can do uh, to prepare for an emergency. And, in, you know, you want to make sure you've got matches, you've got some spare, uh, um, I was going to say batteries, and you've got some uh, you know, flashlights and that sort of stuff, some extra blankets, uh, you know, maybe a couple of jugs of water. And it doesn't take a lot to be prepared, and it's going to make a huge difference if you ever, hopefully you won't, but if you ever have an emergency. Yes. In my emergency kit, just on the margin, I do have a jar or a bottle of Miracle 2 neutralizer gel because it's excellent mm dealing with scuffs, burns, and whatnots of skin problems. I also have a bottle of colloidal silver because you can use that to treat any surface abrasions or infections because you won't find antibiotics where... That's right. You're not probably going to be able to find a doctor in this scenario. Possibly not, yeah. The other thing I was going to say, you just reminded me, is the Skin Sorcery has trauma gel. And I was walking in the woods, and I, I'll put a picture of it and gross everybody out, but a branch gouged out my palm, and it's about a half an inch. So I, for the last two and a half days, I've been putting the gel on here, and I put a 
bandage on it. Just this is the second bandage in two days that I've had on it, not including the one when it was bleeding. And um, it's been healing very, very fast. And no, like I really was expecting pus and some infection and that sort of stuff. Nothing. It's a little bit of redness where you'd expect it. And the trauma gel, we have a video about it elsewhere. The big deal about it is that it is the polymer that drives the uh, skin tissue repair that's protected by the colloidal silver right into the wound. So it's creating the collagen structure while protecting it from infection with itself because yes. it's made with colloidal silver. That's right. So it's, it's amazing. And I really was expecting that because when this has happened before, it's not the first time, there would be a little chunk of flesh that would die and you'd end up having to snip it off or something. It's all good. So very happy about the trauma gel. Very happy I brought it on my trip. <laughs> Big deal. Hey. And it's nice because it's only a one ounce uh, dispenser, so it's easy to take. That's right. It's easy to take. It's easy to travel. And I just and then put it on and it's it's wonderful. Every every parent should have a case of it. <laughs> just one bottle will do you. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us, everybody. You've been watching the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. And before we sign off, Martin, if somebody wants to talk to you about their specific issues or to get into a little more detail, how can they contact you? You can start on the website, www.life-enthusiast.com, or the phone number is 866 543-3388. We're there 12 hours a day. Get hold of us. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.